Oh, hey. <laughs> What's up? Hey, Michael. Let's do this. To Bethy Life. Cool. Okay, we had a great time on our shoot. Mm -hmm. I love your style. What kind of style, who's been like the biggest influence on your style or what is one of the main influences on your style? Mm, I would say it's pretty eclectic from my time with so many different friends. Mm -hmm. um, I have to think early on, um, I've always lived with other families because I was traveling for soccer so much, mm -hmm. um, even in middle school, high school, lived abroad. So I was always with different families and friends. Um, I was always with groups of teams and, and different players. And of course, they come from different parts of California. So some Southern Cal uh, Californian uh, style to Northern Cal is uh, completely different. So I was uh, exposed to just different types of, um, you know, fashion uh, senses, styles, whatever you want to say. And it really was just started to grow from there. So I enjoyed always going to check out like local thrift shops or just things that I could afford, you know, as a yeah. as an early um, you know, child or teenager, if you will. But you know, just growing up, I would always be around some really fashion-forward individuals. Um, a lot of international players that play professionally. They have great great sense of style, and of course, Europe kind of leads that fashion world in some sense so a lot of guys that would come over always had some really cool design and style and so I would take pick us up back that. you're from California mm -hmm. and then where did your where did soccer take you yeah um, so I grew up in Fresno California mm -hmm. Central Valley and um, I just I, I just started kicking balls at four like everybody else and um, fortunately I was kind of good at it mm -hmm. and kinda. I uh, <laughs> you know it's the right place right time I a, a scout saw me playing. Mm -hmm. um, next thing you knew, I was traveling to Europe um, every summer, lived abroad for off and on for about two years. And from that, just kind of started to spiral into a, a, just a crazy tornado of soccer tournaments and tryouts and um, Olympic development programs, more tryouts, more competition. And really, it took me to um, the University of Washington, where I oh. completed my uh, bachelor's in economics and then um, to be drafted to Houston in 2006 and to you know play here for seven years I played in Portland for two and then DC so it's been a it's been a cool ride I've been yeah. fortunate to travel around the world because of uh, the game but that's a little bit of the short version of the story but well, we're so glad to have you here what what are a few places in Houston that you like to hang out mm, depends uh, so a big part of my life is obviously working out, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, f formerly with the team, it was always the training facility. It was my home, and uh, you know, whether you're recovering or whether you're training. So, of course, that was probably be it. Of course, the stadium is one of my favorite places in Houston. Uh -huh. um, but outside of soccer, um, you know, I'm kind of a big fan of the Bayou. I like running. I like being outside. Yeah. There's not many places that you can really trail run here in town, which no. isn't exactly. It sucks, but it is what it is. So Memorial Park School, Rice, mm -hmm. and the Bayou is nice, something different. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, um, you know, just kind of hanging, going out, I don't really go and hang out as much as I used to. So yeah. 32, I'm getting, getting yeah. to a different point where, I mean, I don't watch TV. More I'm, up stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm working on a business. Um, if I'm going to go hang out, it's usually at a restaurant for dinner to right. catch up with some friends. Right. But usually through my days now, I mean, it's pretty much I'm in a gym, um, you know, I'm training on a field, and, and otherwise, you know, I'm at home. Tell us about Sphere Fit. So it's just Sphere. And oh, why it's, do I keep it's, saying a, that? it's okay. It sounds a lot of people like why it. Do I keep sphere saying and that? Fit. Sphere it's fit. soccer fitness. So okay, it, it, it works, but <laughs> Sphere. Uh, is a soccer inspired fitness concept that I designed and been thinking about for I don't know, probably three or four years now and it all started when I went to New York City to visit uh, a girlfriend and she took me to Soul Cycle love the concept yeah. it was a party so on a they're bike coming here they're, here. they're here they're here just got here yeah, yeah they're here mm -hmm. and I just loved it. It was in, it was fun. It was I, mean, I love the EDM, the house music, that beat, yeah. um, you know, just vibe that they create, and so that really kind of started that curiosity. And um, obviously, playing professional soccer, that was my job to stay fit. So right. I didn't really explore group fitness. I didn't uh, have to get a personal trainer. I didn't have to work out with a buddy. So, you know, fast forward. Um, you know, CrossFit came along and really started to take over the fitness industry and. Uh, uh, my career was 
coming towards its its end, and I started to kind of get an experience of what else was out there. Just mm -hmm. on in my off seasons, I would do a yoga class, uh, try Pilates, I would do uh, even some ta Taekwondo. I would do uh, uh, bar method. I mean, it just I, you name it, I tried it. Yeah. And what's funny is I I would always get asked to do pick up indoor games and and leagues, and I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't get hurt, and I didn't want to get hurt. And no. Plus, it was not really the most ideal situation. But what I found was there was no concept out there that was soccer specific. You know, really? Boxing and yoga, yeah. crowd Pilates, etc. So uh, so I started doing some more research and um, to fast forward now I've been doing it for about a year but I've created a, a non-stop 45 minute workout for everybody and uh, I've created four different classes that make up a player so mm -hmm. I just kind of stepped back and said what did it take for me to become a professional mm -hmm. and there's multiple aspects um, so f obviously there's like the body component so I mean upper body lower body and core strength training but soccer players are not huge we're not bodybuilders we're right, supposed to be lean very toned and wow. trim uh -huh. uh, so you know it's more body training and calisthenic and hit training uh, and then there's a big skill component so of course there's a lot of players that would like to aspire to be a professional player that come to mm -hmm. me and say hey teach me yeah. so I've created a skill class mm -hmm. uh, the body class and then I have a soccer inspired yoga class yeah you told me about that That's yeah interesting so what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given mm hmm oh, that's a good question uh, I mean, I'm, I'm immediately going to my grandfather because he was the most influential person in my life he growing was. up. Yeah, uh, you know, for him it was, it was it was it was pretty simple. You know, treat everybody with the same amount of respect, and um, you know, do to others what you can do for yourself. So, I mean, for me, he taught me at an early age that you know everybody puts on their pants the same way. You know, mm -hmm. you treat everybody with the same amount of respect, whether they're bringing your food or you know whether it's. President of the United States. I mean, nobody's different. So, for me, it was it was really important for me to 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 continue his legacy, though, and and his giving nature. Um, and that's why my 5013C and you know you'll hear me always say, keep the ball rolling, pay, uh -huh. pay it forward. Pay it forward. Um, that's been kind of my mantra that I've been carrying on here in Houston with all the uh, philanthropic work and just being involved in the in the city. Um, but as far as uh, actual advice professionally um, you know and this is more specific to to my to my career and for the kids that are aspiring to play professionally you know you can control a few things and and it's a how fit you are mm -hmm. and then your attitude and I mean you can't control how the ball is going to bounce referees decision the other team the opponent um, you know, and for me, obviously, now that I'm not playing professionally, I take that still and apply it to my everyday life. Do you have any irrational fears? Hmm. Not really. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think my biggest fear in anything is just A, not, not succeeding, and then B, jumping out of a plane or heights. Um, oh. But anything else, so I, I that's really... That's not really irrational, though. Oh, no, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just saying, but as far as fears yeah. go, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, because I... I, I, I try to keep myself, uh, you know, I don't know, at least just like dialed in on more of the positive things, but mm -hmm. do you? Uh, yeah, I have some weird fears, but... Like what? Well, this isn't my interview. <laughs> I'm asking. <laughs> what is it? Um, I'm not, I don't know. Mine aren't really irrational. Mine are pretty rational. Yeah. You know, getting older. Nothing, um, yeah you know, life passing you by. Totally. So that's why I'm living kind of YOLOing at this stage of my life. What does that YOLO mean? mean? You only live once. Is that a Drake song? I don't know. You can't say YOLO if you don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> I swear. Okay, anyways, yes, that was a Drake, that's a Drake line. That's a Drake line. <laughs> but I like it, yes, you do only no, live once. Priorities, right? I mean, priorities. I'm like the worst at it because I want to do everything and I think I can when I end up not doing anything at all. <laughs> um, but you know, it's one of the things you can kind of step back when you get a little bit older and mm -hmm. identify some of those flaws and mm -hmm. hopefully make some of those changes. But you know, we're both still young. You can do exactly what you're exactly doing what and YOLO want. it out. You're so um, tell us something humorous about yourself. Hmm. Oh man, humorous. I think I'm pretty dry and boring, actually. You are? No. 
Um, humorous. That's not been my experience. No, 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 no. Um, you know, I don't take myself too seriously. I think that as a reflection of my concept, uh, a lot of people have gone directly for the youth market and, you know, we're going to train your kid to become the next pro soccer player and, you know, we promise X, Y, and Z. For me, I'm really like, hey, listen, we're going to have a great time. You know, you're going to work hard and you're going to smile and have a, uh, an awesome experience. Um, but with my fitness concept, I don't want to say everybody wins because I don't believe that every child should receive a medal, but we're adults. I right. think everybody has their own goal. For me, it's about, uh, like I said before though, creating an atmosphere and an experience that everybody enjoys because I think that's what people pay for. Um, so to pull that back though, as far as like myself, I mean, I think I like to take life not too seriously and yeah. enjoy, enjoy myself, laugh at myself more times than not. Um, but one of the things actually I was just reminiscing on though, and I actually somebody just gave me a birthday present not too long ago, but I used to collect bonsais, and I had over 60 bonsai trees. Yeah, like thing, the, like the Mr. Miyagi, thing? like Karate Kid. I used you to know? have one of those. Yeah, well I was like I've over the top obsessed. Collecting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> collecting. Like lines okay, of bonsais, <laughs> with my, like, my little tweezers and like... Yeah, that was oh, wait, me. Wait, you groom the tree, little trees? Everything, like clip them. You have to That's submerge them in water. You have to make sure they're shaded. Can't be over like eighty, like seventy-two degrees. I mean, it was a, it was, but that's how boring I was. <laughs> Kind of nerdy. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know if that's humorous, but you're laughing, so I guess I'm doing. That's good. I always get something out of somebody. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, not many people know that about me. They do now. I love traveling, so whenever I can travel on a weekend now, I take full yeah, advantage of it. Yeah, you just said you've been like everywhere. Yeah, I just I love it. I mean, because I, for the past ten years of my life, somebody's been telling me what to wear, eat, when to sleep, where to mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. um, how to play, walk, talk. I mean, for the past ten years, I mean, I've been literally a robot in some capacity until yeah. you get on the field. And it's been fun, I don't take it, anything for granted and I miss it every day, but if I wanna pick up and take off right now and go anywhere, I can do it. And yeah, I don't have to yeah, answer to anybody. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I talk to a lot of guys, even older guys that are in their 40s, that were goalkeepers and played you know, longer, and they say you know, you're almost like starting your life yeah. at that age. Yeah. Because for so long, it's an amazing opportunity but it's super regimented. Uh, yes, and yeah. and you and you sacrifice a lot at the same time, and so it's give and take. But uh, it's just fun to be a little bit rebellious at the moment and uh, and go find some fun outside of Houston. <laughs> Do you have a favorite place in town? Uh, no, or, out of town, like where you like to travel? Um, I mean, I love being in California. So yeah, uh, close too. close to my family. Uh, I'll eventually live in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my family's in Fresno, so I go yeah. back there as much as I can. I love the Northwest, played in Portland, so mm -hmm. I have a soft spot for where I went to college in Seattle and right. Portland, where it's probably my, my favorite place um, as far as playing. And um, I've been to Vegas six times this year, so I kind of <laughs> like that place too, it's fun. Um, Why have you gone to Vegas six times? When you win, you got to go back, right? Like you can't just like take their money and just. I was there for New Year's. It was really fun. Oh, I was there too. Uh, but yeah, I have a good time. It's it's close and it's really easy to get friends to go there. Yeah. Oh so yeah. It's, uh, Want to go to Vegas? Yeah. So my dad loves to golf, um, loves to gamble. So it's easy to meet him. Friends in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So all my friends, I have a lot of friends in Houston, but close friends, they live in other cities. Yeah. A lot of guys that are playing, guys that are done playing my friends from back in California, so it's easy place to meet. But my my one place though, if I can go anywhere, it's always Hawaii. So I, I do a lot of my uh, I charity work and obviously for selfish reasons because it's a great place to go and visit, but mm -hmm. the energy, the people, um, you know, just the energy that I get when I'm there is so contagious and so whenever I come back it motivates me to continue to pursue what I'm doing now so that eventually I can retire for the last time and you know have a place there that I can always go and and be well we love you here in Houston we want you to stay here <laughs> I'm not going anywhere I'm not going anywhere. Um, but thanks so much for this interview yeah, of you course. have such a bright future and a bright pressure you're an amazing guy thank you I'll, I'll, this has been great I know well thank you very That's much a wrap. thank okay. you yeah.